I have been dying to do this project. I saw a fellow South African YouTuber, Claudette Hassanyaga, do this. Um, and it is solar dyeing, but using most especially the black turtle beans. I've done a lot of dyeing in my time. I've taught tie dyeing and all sorts of things over the many years that I taught crafts back in South Africa. But I've never tried solar dyeing and her results with the black turtle beans were just amazing. And I won't tell you what happens, but I will f let you follow along in this journey. So I've scratched around in my drawer of scraps, bits and pieces, and I have some lace here. This is cotton lace that I'm going to dye. I have a ball of twine, which is also cotton. I have some mull cloth. This is similar to muslin, and I use it when I'm doing binding of journals. I have some cotton, and I haven't done what I would normally do with this. Normally I would rinse the fabric to get all the sizing out, which is that sort of glazed finish to keep it nice and stiff, but I haven't done that. I want to see what happens. And then I have this um, old, beautiful hand-embroidered lace doily, but it's actually falling apart. And I want to use pieces of this in a journal. So I thought, let me just dye that because it's really stark white. So I have two separate piles of that. One of my jars I'm going to do the black turtle beans. The other one I know successful is always the red onion skins. And then I have this piece of silk, which is a scarf, which is like a really vintagey color. I know some of you would be going, oh, I'll just die for that. But um, because it's silk, I'm not really wanting to tear it up. Um, but I wouldn't wear this color. So I think I'm just going to give it a shot and see what happens if I dye it. So let's see what happens. So you're going to need to have a jug, which you've got some warm water in. And then you're going to need to have some cream of tartar and I know back in South Africa you buy this in the baking aisle you normally buy it either in a little tub or you can buy it in the little packets the first thing that I'm going to do is to actually take some of my onion skins and put them in jar one and I have quite a lot I've been collecting them as we've been eating onions <laughs> in South Africa and we have a store there called fruit and veg and it just really is just like this monstrous um, place that sells fruit and vegetables and um, it's quite marvelous because if you have rabbits or guinea pigs or um, children that need things you can go in and say oh please can I have some carrot tops or please can I have some onion skins because they have big buckets of waste and you would be able to fish out a bag of onion skins very happily from there but here in the UK everything pretty much comes pre-packed so it's not as easy to get so what I'm doing is I'm just stuffing the onion skins in I'm going to use all of that I have because obviously I'll get a stronger color and I just want to make sure that I've got it tucked all around all sides so that I get a fairly even dispersion of the dye all right and I want to have a little bit of space in between so that the water has a chance to move around so that's all my dye solution. I'm pretty certain that when I'm dyeing the onion skins it's going to be completely successful. And so I have my jar ready and set. Looks rather gorgeous, doesn't it? Okay, so now for my turtle beans, I'm just going to need a pair of scissors to snip this open. And um, I can't say that when I was in South Africa I remember seeing turtle beans, but then I didn't know how gorgeous they were for dyeing, otherwise I'm sure I would have made it my business to find them. So I'm going to put a fairly generous amount into the bottom of the jar. So I'm covering the base. Like that. And then I'm going to start to put in my fabric. The way I've folded this is, is that I haven't folded the folds in and in on each other. I've tried to keep the folds open so that the water can penetrate through the various folds. I don't really want to find I have a lot of unevenness. It's not going to matter but I just thought it would be nice just to have a more even dye. So I'm going to put a few more in the middle. And then just pop in the rest of my fabrics. So this part of the process is fairly easy and fairly straightforward and the part that's going to be the hardest part is just waiting for this to work so in my black turtle bean mix I'm going to put this piece of silk um, because I would like to get 
a fairly strong colour and I think I will probably get that with this mix. So now I've got my mix all nice and packed. I have got some air being able to circulate there and I have my two jars ready. I will try different um, materials using this method but I thought let me just do these two first because they were the ones that were most appealing. So I have about a litre of water here which is warm water from the kettle and I'm taking in one packet of my cream, and ta cream of tartar which is five grams and I'm just going to mix this into the water and just the warm water is really just to help this dissolve. You'll see it'll go cloudy and then it should start to get clearer. But it's a very fine powder, so it'll dissolve fairly easily. And this will act pretty much like salt and alum does, just for fixing the dye into the fabric. So when you come to rinse out the excess, you don't lose all your colour. I can still see a few of the little granules floating in the bottom. And as soon as I can see that that's clear, which is about now, I'm going to start pouring this in. I might need to get more hot water and then I'll top it up. So for now I'm just going to fill the jars and then I'm going to take some more video and I'll come back to you and show you what it looks like once they've been filled. See you in a bit. Right, so I have now filled both my containers with my hot water that's had cream of tartar mixed into it and I'm just using an old um, chopstick to push the fabric down. I'm wanting to get all the air bubbles to the surface where possible and with that one I'm fairly happy and I now going to seal the jar and if you have a look here you will already see that the colour is starting to draw through on the fabric. This I'm going to leave in my windowsill for a while and um, I'll take pictures as the days go by just so that we can have a sort of an idea of how things are progressing. There's the black turtle beans, you can see is very dark already, um, but there are a lot more of them and being dry they will have quite an intense colour. So I'm just pushing this all the way down to the bottom so that everything is submerged. And I'm really excited about this one, so thank you Claudette for showing us. But this is starting to draw the colours nicely. Look how lovely they look with the little flecks of white here. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Anyway. There is the mixture. This goes into the sun and obviously with most things that you dye, the longer you leave it in the dye bath, the generally the darker it gets. So I will try and remember to take pictures every day and um, just post those with the video so that you can see the progression of the colour. So this is the beginning of the solar dye and most especially excited about these black turtle beans. So I will see you in a few days time. Bye for now. Well, it's been a few days since I popped my fabric and my string and my lace into the bottles with the dyes and I've shown you now a few of the days that I've filmed. I didn't do a full week because I could see that the fabric wasn't going to absorb any more colour. Um, so I've done a few days and I'm just so delighted now to be able to show you some of the results. Um, yeah, I couldn't wait to get home from work in the evenings just to have a look. So remember I showed you that sort of fawny coloured, mushroomy coloured scarf which I really didn't like and I just popped in and I now have this glorious sort of soft lilac-y kind of colour. It's not 100% even which I'm really pleased about because it just gives you that lovely gentle sort of tie-dye look. So I'm very very happy that that has actually taken the colour so well. From the same batch, I also dyed a whole lot of other different bits of fabric. And so you can see that the background colour of that fawn played a part in the final result of the colour of the silk scarf. It's not as lilac -y as the others, which are probably a bit more lavender for want of a better description. So let's just talk about these. Remember I had a piece of fabric that I hadn't washed the size out of, which is this one. And... Um, Again, because the fabric was folded, it is slightly mottled, but because I'm going to be using this in various craft projects and because I wanted the handmade look rather than a commercially sort of just bath dyed thing, I'm very, very happy with that result. 
The second piece of fabric was a poly cotton, and it is, if you have a look at this, a slightly different colour. This has got more pink in it, this has definitely got more blue, but nevertheless, equally charming. And then I have that piece of the lace tray cloth, which I'd cut into two, and I'm very happy with that too, because I'll be able to use this for sections in my junk journal. Then I had a piece of that mull cloth that I use for my book binding. And could you imagine just how glorious this will be on the spine of a book? Although it's lost its size, which it normally has, um, I will still be able to stiffen it up a little bit when I come to glue it down. So I've got that lovely piece that I could use, or I could use it as a, a closure for one of the journals. And then this was a strip of muslin that I had and I've dyed that and again because it was folded um, it's not 100% even in colour but I'm very very happy with those. So those are the ones that I did with the, the lilac. Then your, oh here's the piece of lace that also came out beautifully. Really happy with that and that's got a nice depth of colour. I much more prefer the sort of blue tone in the lavenders than the pinky ones. This was the ball of string that I popped into that jar. Now I didn't unravel the string before I put it in and look at these glorious colours that I've got. Some are sort of greeny, some are bluey, some are quite sort of sort of a green sort of fawn colour. But I'm really happy with that. I did need to unravel it to let it to dry. Otherwise I was just afraid that it might go a bit mouldy and get some sort of bacteria if it was left just rolled up on the ball. Um, I had, when I took all of those initial pieces out of the jar, a feeling that I would still be able to dye another piece of fabric. So <laughs> in went another piece of material. And um, this one has also picked up a little bit of the green. Now this was quite interesting. I think that as the dye started to be absorbed by the previous fabrics, that it was just left with such residue from the colours of the beans. And I would imagine that those green marks are from where the beans have actually rested on the fabric. But it's still within that same colour range, if you look at all of those colours. And um, it's just really lot lighter because we've used up some of the dye there. The second lot was the onion skins that we did. Here again is that piece of the mull cloth that I've put in. Very happy with that. And then the muslin. And again, a lovely, lovely soft range of colours. And I love the way that the two palettes are actually so harmonious with each other. Here was the string that I did. Now, if I'd had more onion skins to pop into my jar, I would have had a stronger colour. But having said that, I'm really happy with this. And this kind of string, which has these lovely mottled colours, will be just gorgeous with junk journaling. I think I'm going to do some with carrot tops to get a green colour. Um, here is that lovely piece of lace. This is taken really nicely with the onion skin dye, and it seems to have dyed pretty evenly, so I'm happy with that. Here is my piece of doily, and again, I'm really happy with this. Um, as you can see, it is a really, really old doily, um, but I will be cutting this up and using it in pieces. I've also made a whole lot of paper mache dolls, and I'm busy dressing them, although that's quite time consuming, so I might use some of that there. This one has come out beautifully, almost like traditional tie-dye, and this was because the fabric was folded, and this was again a piece of fabric that I hadn't actually washed the size out of, so it hasn't dyed 100% evenly, but the colours are just so gentle. So I'm really excited. Well, my friends, big thank you to Claudette for introducing me to the black turtle beans. I'm so excited about those. I love this lavender colour, but I'm equally happy with the onion skins. And I've done a lot of onion skin things before. We used to do them on, I remember um, we decorated Easter eggs. And I once was taught by a Greek woman how to do this amazing sort of hard-boiled egg. And I had my decorated onion skin dyed hard-boiled egg for probably 25 years um, but maybe I'll do a video on that it was really amazing and it didn't go off <laughs> so that was crazy so and I've done a lot of fabric and paper making with these things so very happy with these dyes really happy with the results and I can recommend it and having said that I mentioned to you that we're going into winter here and the sun isn't very strong at the moment and I've got these results without a lot of sunlight, so I'm even more happy with that. So thank you for joining me on this journey, and um, 
Yes, I would love to hear your comments. Let me know if you've been experimenting as well. Bye for now.